Welcome to the ThinkSell Tutorials. This video is a good starting point before exploring our software on your own or watching our other tutorial videos. I'll show you all the basic usage concepts you'll need to insert a ThinkSell chart into your presentation and style its various visual features. After installing ThinkSell, you'll find the ThinkSell group in the Insert tab of the ribbon. After clicking the Elements button, you'll see symbols in the first two rows for the basic elements and the agenda slides. The other rows all contain chart types. Here are connectors you can use to connect the elements. And More offers additional tools which make your daily work with PowerPoint easier. For example, here is the ThinkSell user guide. To place a new element on a slide, go to the ThinkSell ribbon group. Open the Elements menu and select the chart you want to use. You'll notice small arrows around some of the elements. By pointing at these arrows, you can rotate and flip these elements. You can press the Escape key to cancel the insert operation. After clicking an element, a rectangle next to the mouse pointer shows where the element will be placed on the slide. You can place the new element on the slide in one of two ways. Either click the left mouse button once to place the element with a default width and height, or hold down the left mouse button and drag the mouse to create a custom sized element. Note that some elements have a fixed width for insertion. In these cases, you can only change the height while dragging. But in any case, you can always change the size of the element later. Here is how you can resize an element after you've inserted it. When an element is selected, resize handles are shown at the corners and in the center of the frame. To resize an element, simply drag one of these handles. When you are inserting or resizing an element, it snaps to certain locations. The snapping will help you with correct placement. With snapping, your objects can be quickly and easily aligned. When resized, some elements snap to a predefined size. In the case of a column chart, for example, the preferred width depends on the number of columns. But if you've manually changed the size of an element, you can easily change it back to the default width if you like. It will snap when you come close enough to the default. Just like in PowerPoint, you can hold down the Alt key to move the mouse freely without snapping. The small arrows you see around most of the elements let you flip or rotate them before placing them on your slide. You can also rotate most elements when they've already been placed by using the rotation handle. Simply select the element, click the rotation handle with the left mouse button and, while holding the button down, drag the handle to one of the four possible red highlighted positions. Every chart created with ThinkSell has an associated data sheet, except for the Gantt chart, which offers a calendar instead. Open the data sheet by double clicking the chart or by clicking the Open Data Sheet button that appears when the chart is selected. The data sheet also opens immediately when a new chart is inserted. ThinkSell uses a customized Microsoft Excel sheet for data input which you can use in the same way as regular Excel. You can use all the same shortcut keys, you can enter formulas instead of numbers, and so forth. You can also work with an Excel file as a data source. When you type your values into the data sheet, you'll notice that the chart on the slide instantly updates to reflect the changes. It even grows and shrinks depending on the range of the data sheet that you use. Elements often have parts, called features, which you can individually select. For example, a chart element is made up of features such as segments, labels, axes, difference arrows, connectors, and so on. You'll recognize a feature by the orange frame that appears around it when your mouse pointer is over it. When you click it, the frame turns blue to show you that it's been selected. You might also see a floating toolbar. It has a set of property controls you can use to give your feature a different look. 
You can see formatting and style in this video for more details. When you right-click a feature, you'll see its context menu. You can use it to add features to the element, or remove some of those you currently see. Buttons whose functions aren't available for your current selection are grayed out. If you'd like to see the context menu of the entire element, simply right-click the background. The options in the context menu change depending on which element or feature you've selected. Learn more about the context menu in the videos covering the different chart types. There are several ways that you can remove a feature. You can left-click the feature to select it and press the delete key on your keyboard. You can right-click the feature to open the ThinkCell context menu, then click the delete button. You can also open the ThinkCell context menu that you used to add the feature. Clicking the same button again will remove it. Features always belong to their respective elements and can themselves have further features. I'll give you an example of this. The vertical axis of a line chart is a feature of the chart itself, while the tick marks along the axis are features of the axis. So you can use the chart's context menu to switch the vertical axis on or off. But to show or remove the tick marks of the axis, you'll need to use the axis context menu. You can learn about all of the available ThinkSell features in further videos of this series. You can quickly select a range of features that belong together. We call this multi-selection. To do so, simply select the first feature in your desired range with a single left mouse button click. Then, hold down Shift and click the last feature in the range. When you move the mouse while holding the Shift button, the range of features that will be selected is highlighted in orange. If you'd like to add or remove single features from the selection, hold down Control while clicking. You can also use your keyboard to select a complete range. You can do so by selecting any feature with a single left mouse button click and press Control A. All features of the same kind will then be selected as well. For example, select one data segment and by pressing Control A, all data segments will be selected. You can use multi-selection to colorize entire data series in a chart. You can also use multi-selection to change the formatting of a range of labels. Now that I've shown you how to insert a chart and its features, let's have a look at how to style it. When you select an element or feature by clicking it, you'll see a floating toolbar. The toolbar has property controls, so that you can change the look of that feature. You'll only see controls which apply to that selected feature. In this chapter, I'll explain several general types of controls. You can refer to the other videos in this series for more detail about all of the other property controls. The color control works for features that have a fill color, and for lines and line charts. It doesn't apply to text because the text color and text background color are always set automatically. For example, to change the fill color of a column chart segment, Left-click it to open the floating toolbar. Click on the Fill Color drop-down menu and select the color you want to use. The choice of colors you see in the drop-down menu depends on the color settings in your PowerPoint template. In addition to the colors from the template, ThinkCell adds the custom colors you most recently used to the color control for quick access. The Color Scheme control gives all the segments of your chart consistent coloring. The coloring updates automatically whenever you add or remove a series. This is why it's better to use the color scheme property than the color property. It does a better job of ensuring consistent chart colors. The line style control is for the outlines of segments of column, bar, and pie charts, agenda chapters, and for lines and line charts. You can also use the line style control to change a connector's appearance. You can change the color of an outline with this control. 
It works for segments of pie, column, and bar charts, as well as agenda chapters. The line scheme control specifies the appearance of the lines and line charts. The supported line schemes give consistent line styles and coloring to all the lines in your chart. To add a marker to a specific data point in your line chart, click that data point and select a shape from the marker shape control. You'll then find two other controls in the floating toolbar to change the marker color and marker size. Of course, all this also works in a scatter chart. Instead of styling individual data points, you may consider using the marker scheme control. It ensures consistent markers throughout the whole chart. Click the chart background and select your preferred marker scheme. Our markers in the chart will then be styled consistently. The sorting control gives the segments in your chart a specific order. By default, segments are ordered in the same way they appear in your data sheet. You can also choose values in reverse sheet order to display the last series of the data sheet at the top of the chart and the first at the bottom. ThinkCell can also sort the segments of a category based on their value. Smallest at the top will sort the category so that the smallest segment of each category is at the top. Greatest at the top will place the segment with the greatest numerical value at the top. Of course, as a result of this, segments of the same data series which have the same color will appear at different positions in different categories. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please check out our website for more ThinkCell tutorials.